All right, Breaker Bro 23. Today, I want to take a look at the Blaupunk Houston AM FM cassette car stereo. This unit came out in approximately 83, 84. I know I was putting them in vehicles in around 84 through 86. This was a really high end deck. It's about third down in the model lineup for that particular time frame. Um, we had some bigger ones like the Blaupunk uh, Berlin and the uh, the New York, um, but um, the Blaupunk Houston and the Tucson were probably the best sounding stereos in that lineup during that time. And um, I personally owned two of these back in the day. This is actually my third one. Um, and I bought this one on eBay because I wanted to bring this video to you guys and just show you just just some killer old school car audio and this this was the bomb back then so this is a uh, a head unit um, this has no uh, power amplifier in it so it's just line level signal out only so if you wanted to use one of these you're gonna need like an outboard amplifier this was a very popular combination with this little Blaupunk BPA 415 this is uh, 15 watts times 4 these were very uh, common. We put these in a lot of Porsches. You could hide this little amp underneath the little uh, plywood board in the in the uh, passenger footwell area. And um, this, uh, I don't remember what this amp cost. I'm going to say it was probably right, like around 159 or so back in the day. Correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, I was an installer, not into not in sales. So. Um, I kind of had that advantage because we could, you know, we could see what was selling and what sounded good, and that's why, you know, I came to love these uh, Houston so much. But anyway, um, very full featured deck. So over here we have um, the um, over here we have volume and on-off control as well as the outer knob here being for bass control you pull out on the volume control and you get front to rear fade as with these markings over here on the other side we have treble control on the outside here this is treble we have tuning control up and down you push this button and it will scan to the next channel up no uh, down scanning back in the day this was just up scan on this um, and then you pull out on this knob and you would get uh, balance control left to right. So we'll start over here. This little eye here is the little infrared remote eye. Yes, this was infrared remote controlled. A very huge deal back in this era. And a very nice feature to have actually. I didn't really ever see a reason for this until I actually bought my first Houston. And after you learn the feel of where these buttons are you can't live without this remote I it was just it's crazy so very nice anyway so we have the eye for that we have fast rewind we have fast forward the center one here is um, the auto reverse uh, control to flip from side A to B B to A this is memory uh, to set stations so you push the memory control and push the station that you want and that you've already tuned to and it's locked into your memory which is kind of cool all right six uh, memories for AM six for FM this little window right here if you can see that this is for um, auto illumination so when you cover that up you see it got dim and then when you let go uh, and introduce more light into the environment this gets brighter this was really neat because at nighttime you just didn't have to worry about a glare coming up from your deck and green really never glared back at you anyway so that was kind of cool all right CPS which is cassette program search otherwise known as music search this is your metal tape control Dolby that was Dolby B this is local distance AM FM modes very simply laid out um, a really neat tape mechanism in here this was all pretty much high-end back then sets the tape down in there and then of course you could either turn the vehicle off or just push the volume control and the tape is ejected for you which is kind of cool all right one thing I really really liked about this radio 
My favorite station back in the day in Salt Lake was KJQ, which is now X96. They were transmitting in Dolby FM stereo, or FM Dolby stereo, as they called it. And that was a really neat feature. The Dolby works on FM on this deck, and uh, I think the Tucson as well. And um, I really like that because it would um, it would not muffle the uh, FM tuner section or the uh, Dolby FM station. It actually brought it out. It was uh, brighter sounding, um, a little bit less, from what I can remember, maybe a little bit less um, static, like if it, your car was picket fencing a little bit or something like that. But boy, would it would it would it really make your FM just sound killer? And so. I'm I'm playing this on a pair of three and a half inch uh, Cambridge Soundworks monitor speakers here, so you're not going to get the full effect. But I'm going to try to demonstrate what this does to uh, your FM sound, even on a modern station that has no Dolby encoding. So let's turn that off. Okay. I don't know if you heard that. I don't want to get into copyright issues. And on these speakers, quite honestly, it doesn't do it any justice. It kind of makes them sound a little too bright and tinny. But um, actually, I can back the tone down a little bit, or the, the treble down. Let's try that again. Anyway, really cool feature. I really like that a lot. And on that old um, uh, radio station that used to transmit and Dolby FM. It was just, just, just crazy. Anyway, so these retailed for, um, if I remember right, roughly the $600 range. Um, I got mine for, I think it was just a little under 400 bucks a piece, either a little under or a little over. Anyway, you can still find these on eBay once in a while. Um, I've been looking for a long time because I wanted to get one of these and just kind of um, just kind of relive that whole thing. I, I really regretted selling mine um, and I tried to track the guy that I sold mine to and um, couldn't find him. Um, just hopefully on a whim that he would have it. So I bought this on eBay to bring to you guys. I feel pretty good about this. I got this with the um, the wireless remote um, and the BPA 415 and this came in at a little under 200 bucks and um, I thought that was an extremely awesome deal I'm very very happy about that and it it all works um, I should probably throw a belt in here um, if I remember right it's been a long time it's been 30 something years since I've had one of these apart um, but um, I think one belt runs the whole thing and I'm just it plays fine and everything, but sometimes if this deck is cold, the, the deck is actually physically cold, it will take a second to uh, suck that tape down in there. I hear so this has a um, send dust head in it, and the uh, cassette section in here um, to me sounds like one of the good old um, Nakamichi decks. I don't want to say a dragon or something, but I remember that was the big deck back then. I know they had some lower line units, but um, I like the sound of those. And I really like the sound of this. Um, this Dolby is very effective on this cassette deck. It doesn't um, it doesn't uh, take all the fun out of the, the program source when you hit Dolby. It takes the hiss out. It doesn't really mess with the high end all that much like some Dolby circuits do. And I know they had to keep to a standard, but some decks just didn't act that way. Um, this is a very bright sounding deck. It's full bodied. Uh, the cassette mechanism in here, man, is just, is just awesome. All right, so I really don't have any dislikes with this deck except other than and when you turn the deck off or cut power to it, it automatically ejects the deck. Um, I've got the amp gain jacked up all the way in this, so hopefully you guys can hear this. There was kind of a weird little, little oddity that these decks had. Um, when you turn them on, I don't know if you can hear that. I'll kick the Dolby in and maybe brighten it up. There's a little bit, you can hear the... Oh God, let me get to something that... There we go. The volume's down all the way. Okay. So, 
if you adjusted the amp correctly, you wouldn't really hear this. And then in a car environment, you're less likely to hear it as well. But it wouldn't turn down all the way. You hear that? So you actually had to use the remote to get it down to where it was totally dead. Now, like I say, I jacked this uh, amp gain up all the way to um, kind of emphasize what this thing would do. And generally, um, you know, you never put your amp gain up all the way. It's just not necessary. Um, not the way to adjust an amp properly, but you know, you run the, the amp at about, you know, half gain or something like that, or maybe, maybe as high as three quarters gain, um, you would have this little issue. Now you solve the issue with turning it down with the remote, but the deal was when you got out of the car or turned the deck on or off and you came back, it would default to not being turned all the way down again. And I'm, I'm kind of amazed that actually Blaupunk let that out. And I honestly don't know if there's a modification for that or anything. I know every Houston I ever put in did this. So what I would do is I would adjust the amp gain with two things in mind. With basically what the uh, vehicle gain sounded like as far as, you know, like these were in a lot of Porsches. So they had like, what, six and a halfs in the in the in the doors and then um, I think they were ooh geez what was in the back in an OEM Porsche back then four by sixes four inches they were little slimline uh, Blaupunk speakers up underneath the piece of cardboard but anyway um, you don't need the amp gain up very high so um, I would do I would adjust the amp gain for the car environment and then of course uh, to knock this out so it didn't, uh, the, the user couldn't hear that. Which kind of sucks, actually. On the bench, I can hear it because I got the speakers like a foot from me. And uh, it, it is kind of noticeable. But anyway, that was the only flaw. Um, this thing is, you know, 30 what years old. And uh, she's still rocking and rolling. Anyway, all right, cool, guys. I've gone on long enough. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Do you still own one of these? Do you still have one of these in your car? Um, what was your experience with the Houston? Anyway, and uh, also, please don't forget to subscribe. All right, there you go, guys. Breaker Broke 23. Over and out.